Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the ThinkPad X1 Carbon from Lenovo. This is kind of a premium laptop that we'll be taking a look at today. We like to look at these every once in a while. And I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is reviewing this content before it is uploaded and nobody is paying for what you're about to see. So let's get into it and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a laptop that has a number of different configurations available, and as such, the price range is pretty significant. Uh, it starts at around $1,500, and you can get up as high as about $2,500 or so, depending on what you put in it. Uh, this one is kind of a mid-range version. I think it's about $1,500 or $1,600 as you see it. Uh, it's got an i7-8550U processor. Uh, the base model has an i5. That's the new 8th generation quad-core chip from Intel. This one has a 1080p display, 14 inches. It's a matte display. It's IPS, very good viewing angles on it. It actually looks really nice. And it's also a touchscreen, too. So it's a touchscreen that's not all that shiny. Uh, so this is kind of the mid-range display. Uh, there's a 1440p display with HDR available also. I saw that at CES. It looks great. Uh, this one looks very nice, too. I think when you put the two of them next to each other, that other display will uh, look a lot better. But uh, from what I'm seeing here, this looks really nice. This one has 8 gigabytes of RAM, dual channel configuration, so it is running at the uh, best possible performance you can get, but uh, it is only DDR3 RAM. A lot of high-end laptops now have DDR4 RAM, and you can't upgrade it after you purchase it. So while this one has 8 gigabytes, we'll never be able to upgrade it to 16, so you need to choose when you purchase the amount of RAM you wish. I think 16 gigabytes right now is the maximum configuration. The storage on this one is a 512 gigabyte Samsung SSD, and that SSD can be upgraded to a larger one if you want. It's an M2 package. You just have to unscrew the bottom of the computer here to get into it. Uh, Notebookcheck.net, a great website for reviewing laptops, took it apart, so I'll put a link to that down below in the video description so you can see what it looks like inside. This is not a two-in-one. It is, though, uh, capable of uh, putting the display flat against the desk, so you don't have to worry about accidentally cracking it off there. Uh, the whole package here is very lightweight. Uh, it is 2.49 pounds. What's interesting is that this is the same weight as the X280 we looked at a week ago, which is a 12-inch laptop, so it weighs identical to that one. Uh, that's about 1.13 kilograms for those of you uh, measuring with the metric system there, so all, all in a really uh, pretty lightweight package on this one. Uh, it's made out of magnesium. It's got that and carbon fiber, so that really helps cut down the weight there. Uh, the battery life, though, is pretty good on this one, about 10 to 11 hours in my testing. A lot of other reviewers have found about the same. Uh, that's doing kind of basic work, word processing, some web browsing, nothing too strenuous on the computer, but I think you won't have an issue getting through a workday with this one. Uh, if you start gaming on it or doing some other stuff, that, of course, will uh, impact the battery life. Very pleased with the keyboard and trackpad as usual. This is a ThinkPad through and through, so you've got these uh, really nice deep travel keys here. It's backlit. Uh, you have a choice of using the uh, ThinkPad nub here or the trackpad or both if you wish. You can do both at the same time. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Uh, you can also uh, use the fingerprint reader here to get into the computer very quickly, so that's a nice thing there. On the top of the display, at least on this one, uh, we have a webcam with a, a little shutter here on the top. This is something we saw on the X280 as well, and the reason why they're doing this now is because a lot of people have been putting uh, you know, tape and other things on the top of their cameras to block them when they're not using them. So this is a way to uh, make it look nicer, I guess. It doesn't actually turn off the camera or any of the electronics, but it does mask it. I believe if you go up to the higher end display, it does support the uh, Windows Hello uh, facial detection thing. It's got an infrared sensor at the top uh, on that other one, but this one here and the lower one below it uh, just have the webcam. It's a 720p webcam, nothing to get excited about, but it works uh, fairly well for what you want to do with it. And of course, you don't have to put tape on there. For ports, we got a bunch of them on here. There are two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one here and one here. Uh, this is also doubling as your power adapter. I tested it with a dock. I was able to get one of those docks that charges the laptop and gives you all those extra ports with a single cable. That worked fine. This has a 65-watt power supply, so look for a dock that uh, provides at least that much power. Uh, it's also a four-lane Thunderbolt port, so 
Uh, if you are connecting up external GPUs and that kind of thing, you will get uh, the best performance you can out of it. So your two Thunderbolt ports are here. This little port here is for uh, the Lenovo network adapter. That plugs in there to get you a gigabit ethernet without having to give up a Thunderbolt jack for that. So you have that option. There's also a docking station you can get for these. Uh, these are largely used as corporate laptops. So there's a lot of accessories that uh, go with these. So your executives can pop them into a dock when they get to their uh, desk if they want. Nice uh, you know, custom made thing. But of course, any Thunderbolt dock now will work with this. Here you've got a full-size USB port, a full-size HDMI output, so you can get a video out of here as well as out of the uh, Thunderbolt ports on there. This thing will very easily drive 4K displays at 60 hertz, so you've got that going on there. Combo headphone microphone jack over here, another full-size USB 3 port. This will also charge your devices when the laptop is off. And you have a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. And there is a fan on the side of the device here, which it needs to cool off that processor inside. I found it isn't all that loud. In fact, most of the time when I was using the laptop for testing, doing word processing and email and web browsing and whatnot, it was usually silent. But it will kick on under load. You will hear it, but it's not a loud, whiny kind of fan. It's pretty uh, quiet, at least compared to some uh, prior laptops we've looked at here on the channel. So all in, I don't think the fan will be too distracting unless you're really stressing the computer out all the time. So let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We'll begin with web browsing. And as you can see here, it's able to pull up my YouTube channel and run 1080p 60 video without an issue. That's to be expected out of a computer uh, at this price point. We also pulled up the nasa.gov website, which is very multimedia rich. Uh, that rendered up very quickly. And of course, you've got uh, the latest AC wireless on this one as well. So I think for all of those light tasks, it's going to do fine. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 175.9, which puts it uh, pretty much in line within the margin of error with the Yoga 920 we looked at a few weeks ago, which is also running with the same processor. So this is a nice bump over prior generation i7s in this class of processor because those were only dual core chips. Now we've got quad core chips on these devices in that similar package. So that's why we're seeing uh, this performance boost over prior generation computers. More cores when uh, used appropriately will get you a lot more performance. We also ran Microsoft Word, of course, just to make sure that ran okay. And sure enough, we we're able to do our desktop publishing example without any problems there either. Now these laptops are not designed to be gaming machines. They are work machines, but what's been great about some of the developments we've seen with Intel processors over the last year or two is that they have been improving their graphics capabilities. And these laptops actually don't do too badly as game machines, if you don't mind running things at very low settings. Uh, so let's begin with uh, GTA 5, believe it or not. We were able to get uh, frame rates at around 17 to 30 frames per second. There was a range there. Uh, this is running with the lowest settings at 1080p. I think the combination of some of the enhancements to the graphics side of this processor they've made over the last year or two, along with those extra cores, uh, make some of these games more playable than they were a year ago on this class of hardware. We also ran Doom, the new version of Doom, and that one also saw similar frame rates around 17 to 30 FPS. Again, all the settings are uh, turned down on that. And of course, no video would be complete on this channel without Minecraft. And there we got frame rates between 126 and 246 frames per second. So very good Minecraft performance. This is the Java version of Minecraft we're running on here. So no issues there. Now, one of the cool things about these Thunderbolt 3 equipped laptops is that you can plug in, really, uh, external GPUs to it. Basically, taking a desktop GPU, putting it into a special enclosure, and just plugging it in. I'll put a link down below to a video that I did on doing just that. Uh, so if you are looking to uh, do a little more gaming without having to have a separate gaming device when you get home, uh, you can do that with one of these. Basically, have the laptop uh, utilize its processor and then connect up that Thunderbolt uh, external GPU to one of the ports over there. In fact, Lenovo's got one coming out soon with a GPU integrated into the dock. I hope to get one of those in at some point and see how it performs. Now, we also like to run a benchmark from 3DMark called the CloudGate test, and we did that on here. And there we got a score of 9,639. Very good performance here. It actually did a little better than the Yoga 920 with the same processor inside of it, both in its uh, CPU performance on the physics test and on the graphics test there. And it might just be how, in, uh, how Lenovo has tuned this processor 
on this particular laptop. So we had decent performance there. And you can also look at the X1 Yoga OLED that I still haven't reviewed yet, but I'm going to do something with that soon from uh, last year. This was the prior generation X1 hardware. And you can see how this new processor compares to the old one, better graphics performance and uh, we're seeing also um, almost double the frame rates on physics just because we have a quad core chip versus a dual core that that one had. We also like to run a stress test to see how well the computer does under load because these processors are designed to slow down the hotter they get. Uh, so we ran the 3D Mark stress test to find out how this one does. Uh, we got a score of 93.7%, uh, which is not a passing grade. So you will lose some performance when you're really stressing out the computer under load here. But uh, it's not as bad as what I've seen on some other laptops that don't handle this test as well. Uh, you can also see there the, uh, the temperatures that the processor got up to when it was fully under load. And now let's take a look at Kodi before we close out the review. We've got an HEVC file playing here. This is 140 megabits per second, 10-bit 4K, a real uh, monster of, of a file, and it seems to be playing back just fine, which again is what we'd expect out of a computer at this price point. So that was great. So it should be able to handle uh, Netflix and all the other stuff you might throw at it, including some really high-end stuff too, which is good. The sound out of it though isn't all that great. Uh, the speakers are located here at the bottom. Uh, so they are downward firing and they're kind of tinny. You get good stereo separation, they're loud enough, but uh, not a very good range of sound. So I think you might want to plug in some headphones or use a uh, Bluetooth headphone or something to get better audio quality out of the laptop here. But all in, this is a very nice premium laptop. It's really lightweight, uh, it performs really nicely. It's got a nice balance to it, as you can see here. When I lift up the, uh, the uh, display here, the bottom part isn't kicking up on me there. So they've put a lot of work into this and it really just feels like a nice premium device. And having the touch screen on a matte display like this is also equally nice. I'd love to maybe do a comparison between the HDR and the non-HDR display because this this one looks really nice and I remember sitting in this little room when they were doing their press briefings at CES and it was amazing how much better the HDR display looked next to this one. So uh, you will be getting a really nice display if you go up to that 1440p version. But either way, I think this is, if you're looking to spend a little bit more on a laptop, a uh, really nice way to go. Good performance, good battery life and something I'd be comfortable recommending at this price point. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.